no. What's going on there? Why am I facing sideways? Oh, I'm facing lots of ways. That's weird. I'm not exactly sure why, though. Uh, you know, if I do this for one quick second. Oh, that's better. There we go. Woo! And my sound seems to be on. So maybe you can hear me. Thank you. Thank you for that extraordinarily mediocre round of applause. Uh, perhaps deserving. Uh, it's so hard making theater uh, when you're all alone. I don't know about you at home. Maybe, maybe you're one of those people who finds themselves in an early relationship uh, quarantining together and wondering if this was a good idea. Maybe you have a, a, a family, a very large family, and actually it doesn't feel like isolation whatsoever. Uh, maybe you're like me, and you're all alone in an apartment, uh, having fashioned your closet into a white box theater. Uh, if so, we should trade tech secrets because, as you can tell, uh, sometimes they fail on you. Uh, that last one, it seemed to be an issue with my Mac power cord. I guess I'm making this poor computer do a whole lot. It's probably angrier at me than I am at it. But, all of this aside, I am Joshua William Geld, and this is the Cyber Tank Variety Show. It's coming to you live today from my closet here, uh, which I call the Theater in Quarantine. I've been doing some of my own stuff over at my YouTube channel, Joshua William Gelb. Oh my gosh, we're sinking anyway. The theme is anger. Thank you to the tank so much for uh, having me. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Danielle, Michaela. And we're going to get started uh, with Christian Robertson's piece, Right and Left. We'll talk more about that when we're done. Here it is. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. But first, I done wrestled with an alligator. That's right. I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. Man, dude. Bad. Fast. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. Kept his right and left hand beefing. One knocking teeth in, the other one chiefing. But first. That was Christian Robertson's right and left. Uh, so the tank uh, has each week at the uh, variety show, we have a theme. This week's theme is anger. Uh, and, and yeah, it's, there's a lot to be angry about right now. I for one am angry at most streaming technology, but perhaps I neglected to uh, pray to the gods, the ancient gods of streaming, uh, in order to uh, have an easier go of it. Uh, the technology, it's weird, though, that we are, of course, connected through this 
seemingly random, extraordinarily ambivalent tech that doesn't care about us whatsoever. Uh, but that's just my own anger. You can see I'm really angry because I'm like crumpling paper this tightly. It was supposed to be a bit about gravity. Oh, good throw though. Uh, so next up, we're going to do two back to back because we actually have a huge show for you tonight. Uh, so we have Ren Shia, who is going to uh, give us a little rage music. It's a bit of a glimpse into uh, the, their current everyday life. And after that, we're going to have Fuck Cake Boss from We Are Animals by Katya McMullen. Uh, it's going to be featuring Ariel Gonzalez. And uh, that is going to be a monologue from We Are Animals by Katya McMullen. But that's going to all follow Ren Shia, a little rage music, coming up next. Um, so, the first cake I baked without mix, I was 13, and I had just gotten dumped by Matt Cosmo, and my mom was on this, like, sugarless vegan cake, so everything in our kitchen tasted like molten ass, <laughs> and I found the contraband ingredients in the garage, and I got to work, it was this weird recipe of bananas, uh, vanilla truffle cake batter with white fondant icing. And I mixed, and I frosted, and I got into this trance, and before I knew it, I was, you know, constructing and squeezing this elaborate wilting flower with the, the pinks and the blues all sort of swirling together almost whimsically in the, in the cake. It was 
It was sweet, but it was also a little sad. It was like eating a part of me. With cake, if something happens, I can construct something that it feels like only I can create. And I can look at my work of art and I know this will only be beautiful for a day. Expiration dates are kind of thrilling, don't you think? Uh, but my boss, uh, Damaka of Time Out New York Featured Bakery, Damaka's Delight, disagrees about my ability. Apparently, my cakes are sadder and weirder than the cakes people want to eat, and cakes should be uplifting, but what does she know? <laughs> Stupid little bakery with her yellow daisies and her starch white tablecloths and her giggling and her cupcakes. You know, she just doesn't get it, and that's her problem. Also, her head has gotten really big since she was on Last Cake Standing, that dumbass Food Network show, and I mean, clearly her judgment is skewed because she chose Leopold to a sister, even though he doesn't even bake. I don't want to be associated with her on national television anyway. I mean, she only uses buttercream. Even though I've explained like 95,000 times that that's limiting because buttercream can only go on top of buttercream. So where is the true artistry in that? But it's whatever. She can just shove her soulless, five-tiered, sunflower, daisy white buttercream bullshit up her tiny bleach Connecticut asshole. And you know, one day, I'm going to be on Cake Bus. And one day she's going to turn on Cake Bus and see me. And... You know, I know that there is something um, special in everyone, but I'm getting really tired of only my mom and my creepy roommate Ralph getting it. Because I, I, I want to be... I want them to... I need them to see me. Because passion can only take you so far. You know, there are only so many works of fucking art I can make for myself, and Ralph is starting to get really fat, and just, when is someone gonna get it? You know? When is someone gonna see me? Expiration dates can get old sometimes. I think, what the fuck am I doing in this city? Living in this shithole in bed working for $12 an hour at some fancy-ass poser bakery. When I know there's something inside me that I can trust, but, but trusting it has led me to this shitty, shitty life. And because I know there's something inside me that makes me feel alive and like my hands are made for good, and like my arms are made for good, and like my eyes are made for good, and like I have a soul, and that it's okay to walk around because most of the time I honestly feel like I'm drowning. Hope was a lot easier to wrap my head around before that was this delay. And people say that she's brilliant because they don't, they don't know how to think about cake. You know, they just replace their need for something truly exceptional with hers because it comes closer to what they want, but, but it's not what they want. And she just gets to, 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 to have this smugly satisfying life with her, her fat children and her fat pug. She gets to lay her head on the pillow thinking she's an artist, a genius, but they, but they don't know. They don't. God damn it, I want to be famous. Hi, I'm back. And that was Ariel Gonzalez in a monologue uh, called Fuck Cake Boss from We Are Animals by Katya McMullen. And uh, before that was Ren Shia's A Little Rage Music. I realized that I should definitely put up these Venmo uh, handles for some of the artists who submitted them. 
Okay. Oh boy, hold on, but I forgot which display to put it on. Uh, so I'm just gonna run out for a second. And uh, yeah, I'm trying, this is me on the fly right now. Uh, oh boy, we really, you can hear me though, but I, I really messed up uh, the stream for a quick sec. This is gonna take no time at all. See, uh, that's, that's me, but I'm gonna be on the floor again. And then those are their, their Venmo handles. Okay, yeah, there we go. I sort of broke the fourth wall. Uh, it's sort of inevitable though. Uh, so please, uh, if if you have uh, any anything uh, to give, uh, these artists are uh, would would appreciate it. I'm sure. Uh, so uh, hi, hello. Uh, we are uh, going to keep going uh, with two more. Uh, we're going to start. Uh, we're going to go get to Rodrigo Fisher's uh, Carnivalization of a Lonely Man. But first, we'll talk about that later. But first, we're going to hear from Paul Hufker. This is an audio piece uh, by Paul, who's a, an old friend of mine. Actually, we worked together uh, for the first time uh, when I was directing a hunger artist uh, for the tank uh, at the Connolly Theater. And, and Paul was a light board, uh, a spotlight op. And uh, I was surprised uh, to, to when, I, when I realized that, that Paul was actually a playwright that I knew of. And I was like, why are you spotlight opping? And, you know, he, he, he just loved the tank and, and wanted to be working there. Uh, so here's a piece called uh, I Asked the Four Woman About Building with Anger. And this is what she said by Paul Hufker, followed by Rodrigo Fisher's Carnivalization of a Lonely Man. See you afterwards. Hello, my name is Paul Hufker. And the coolest person I know, Megan Finn, asked me to write something short about anger. And so I did. This is a short poem about anger entitled, I asked the forewoman about building with anger, and this is what she said. You want to build this house with anger? And the forewoman roared with laughter. Anger is a building block that will not detach from the ground. Anger cannot be casually lifted. Anger will never willingly elevate or ever even once without asking. Build up to the higher floors, you stupid kid. Anger insists every room contain a mirror. You ever seen anger? No, sir. Ma'am. Well, anger mutters no and shakes its head when it can smell that dinner is nearly finished cooling and my family is about to eat. Give me a minute. Let me look down, away from the sun, and really strain myself and try and remember a time when anger did not have no on its lips. Nope, it can't be done. What's anger do at dinner time, Mr. Foreman? It's Ms. Forewoman. And anger sits and eats in a slump on the floor in the corner where the cat hair compiles and ruins the food. No, 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 it mutters. But it alters nothing. It alters nothing. A's purpose is to make you dizzy, you see. A insists it is your bestie. My two girls taught me that one. A spins you round at the slumber party until you are sick and you throw up all that dessert in the new front yard. If your mother and father could see how angry they would be. A says it feels heavy all day. How do you know? Boy, you got a set of stones on you. A don't like our construction either. Says the stones, the real building blocks that all these buildings should be built on, for God's sakes, are from the river. What river? The river near the property. And yes, they go in your pocket. And yes, they are supposed to get hot. They are penitent stones, after all. I'm Ms. Forewoman, and I say so. Here, want to try them? And at first you enjoy how they're warm and righteous as hell, but pretty quick your hands and thighs are burning. Anger likes the smell, Miss Forewoman yells, but that's the last thing it likes, especially about itself. Yes, A finishes each miserable day alone on the roof. Stand here a moment and marvel at it. Stand with me and admire the suburban sunset on A's face. Almost glorious. If you had A in your back pocket, you think, you could change the world. One of them is listening to one other one. One of them is listening to two of them. One is not listening to them. And he is having tears, then tears in emotion. <laughs> Th 
three of them had been loving. Two of them were loving, one of them was not loving and was remembering everything and was feeling something. Each one of the three of them was such a one, one they were then. Each one of them, one of the three of them, meant something. I might be falling at the mouth, but give me some little toys. Bring me a cup of tea with a touch of sugar and I'll die for the countdown. Who the fuck are you? I asked the forewoman about building with anger, and this is what she said, followed by Rodrigo Fisher's... Oh, no, I lost my notes. Oh, dear. Uh, Rodri... There, where are you? Oh, there it is. Rodrigo Fisher uh, with Carnivalization of a Lonely Man, a Work in Progress. Uh, now, that piece was inspired by Dostoevsky's notes from the underground, and uh, it's... A multidisciplinary project to approach darkness. He also, uh, Rodrigo also wants to credit uh, Corey Nakasue, Brent Felker, Yasmin, San Yasmin Santana, and Greenkill. Uh, so uh, here, I, so I just wanted to try something out here. We're at the, like the halfway point of the entire event uh, here at the Cyber Tank, and uh, I've been playing a lot with. Uh, with spatial orientation lately in this closet uh, because, you know, the world is sort of getting topsy-turvy and it's hard to know what day of the week it is, which way is up and which way is down. Uh, and and I've been pre-programming, or I've been programming everything and doing a lot of post-work on my videos, but what got really, made me really excited today is that I finally figured out how to start doing it live. Uh, and so this is going to be the very first time I'm going to push this button and we're going to see randomly, truly, uh, where this room goes. Uh, <laughs> see if I can respond to it. Are you ready? So, uh, here we are. I'm going to press this button. What? Nothing happened. Oh, wait, I know why. Ugh. You have to have the QLab window out on top. Otherwise, it just the button doesn't push. Usually you have tech ops for that. But, you know, I'm, I'm my own tech op. So, you know, pushing the button. Whoa! Nope, wrong way, that way! See, I gotta do the inverse of what I'm seeing on the screen. But that'll make sense the next time we do it. Like now! Whoa! Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, live. Crazy, right? I'm just gonna prep for the next one. And whoa! Go! Ooh. Yeah, there we go. You know what? That was pretty great. So we're going to keep going with the next video now. Uh, the next two uh, we have from Sarah Alice Schull, a song, but we're holding on about, well, about her arch nemesis. And after that, a poem by Maria Mukuka. Uh, but first here is Sarah Alice Schull. Take it away, Sarah. My name is Sarah Alice Scholl. What's up, y'all? Uh, that might be backwards. I don't know. Um, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky originally. I moved to NYC three and a half years ago to pursue acting and writing and creating and all that good stuff. And now I'm back in Kentucky for reasons. Reasons that are unprecedented and affecting all of us right now. And it has me thinking a lot. And it has me thinking about one person in particular who is also a Kentuckian. Well, not really, because he's actually from Alabama. Uh, this one's for him. Though we probably won't listen to it because he never does. But shall we? Everything sucks, but I'm holding on. And Mitch McConnell was never my number one. He looks like a turtle who just lost his race, which he will in November. I wish I could take a pie and shove it in his stupid face.
voter suppression are really fucking bad. Oh, even out the cruises, who don't pay taxes here? That's a damage dear. Oh, everything sucks, but we're holding on. And Mitch McConnell was never our number one, or third, or fifth, or eighteenth, or a thousand. He looks like cottage cheese, which is super fucking gross. I'll stop insulting his looks and move on to his clothes. He has stupid suits, and he's got really cheap pants, and he's got bad stimulus plans. The way that he has governed hurts his people so. He doesn't seem to care, so it's time to fucking go. Six terms and wanted Obama to have won. Well, he failed and he's no gone. Everything sucks, but America's holding on. And clearly, we are not Mitch's number one. I don't think that he ever considers us when making his decisions, which are McConnell is a snake and he's peeling. I got this really strange feeling. He takes his skin flakes, blends them up, and put them in his milkshakes. And I know that's fucking disgusting, but so is he, and he's always fussing. Oh, I wish that Cheeto would listen. He never does, and we're not best friends. I made a deal with the devil, and now. But the shit's wow worse than the shit's ever been. <sighs> Nobody wants you to be their man. You married Elaine as part of your plan. God, God, whatever. Well, it's not really between you and God, is it? I mean, it affects all of us. You got her a job, you know, when the Trump administration came into power and bad shit has gone down. You can check it out on NPR. Anyway. Everything sucks, but we're holding on. And Mitch McConnell was never our number one or a millionth or a choice ever in the galaxy. I don't know why we ever chose him, but we're not ever choosing him. Uh, Again. Yes, everything sucks, and Mitch is a bitch. Oh, listen up, Dorothy, this is one really, 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 really bad witch, but he's not cool enough to be a witch. Everything sucks, but we're holding on. If we in November, well, the people will have one. So vote. November 3rd, 2020. Even if you don't live in Kentucky and can't vote against Mitch, you can still vote. And if you have a primary coming up soon, please go to vote.org to figure out how you can vote with an absentee ballot or a mail-in ballot. Thank you so much. Stay safe and vote. I run and don't walk, scream because I can't talk, and breathe heavily till this all too familiar feeling frees me from within its eight foot high concrete walls. And when I'm me again, smiling, happy to be alive, and grateful for everything me, I see how solemn this can all sometimes be.
to work three jobs, two hour train rides, audition on the side, haven't seen my family in quite a while, kind of life breeds fear and uncertainty. And so some days, some difficult and lonely days, please forgive me if I can only be angry at the world me. Wow, that was Maria Mukuku with a poem. Uh, Maria is a, a Greek Zambian native living in New York City uh, who's uh, debuted at Solo Fest and uh, works at La Mama. Before that was uh, uh, Sarah Alice Schull with uh, We're Holding On. Uh, now we're going to, oh my goodness, we're moving quickly. Uh, now we're going to, to do two more. Uh, we're going to start with Akin Salawu uh, and uh, and Naka knock, knock knock Namakula Wu and Gabriel Lawrence with Bomb Diggity, followed by David Lawson's New York State is number one. Hey, Scooter. Hey, Laverne. Hey, how you doing? Me. Uh, I'm crazy. <laughs> Hmm. You are not crazy. I am. I've been trapped in my tiny apartment with my cat for 36 days, and Mr. Elba keeps looking at me like I'm crazy. Whoa, I, I thought your cat's name was Pillowcase. Oh, we changed his name on day 17. Idris was on TV, and the cat rubbed up against the screen to feel Idris. The connection was undeniable. So, his new name is Mr. Elba. No, I did not rub up against the screen to feel Idris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just kissed the screen. It was nice. It was special. Uh, Mr. Elba thinks I'm crazy. And he knows I stink. My building got this plumbing issue, so I can't shower or flush the toilet. Our mm -hmm. super died of COVID on day eight, so we almost have no plumbing. I peed in a cup yesterday and Mr. Elba watched. My cat, not the actor. <sighs> I kind of don't think Idris Elba is into water sports. I mean, it doesn't strike me as the type that would want to watch me pee, and that's okay. I'm fine with that. <sighs> so, I'm peeing in a cup, and Mr. Elba, my cat, looked at me like, ah, girl, you crazy. I went up to the roof, uh, to empty my cup of pee, and my flamenco dancer neighbor, Esmeralda, was up there emptying her pee cups because she can't flush either. Mm. Esmeralda had like six pee cups. Esmeralda looked at me like, girl, where you been? I empty my pee cups three times a day. And I said, I just hold it. Esmeralda looked at me like I was crazy. So mm. I said, I know I'm crazy. This whole thing is crazy. And Esmeralda, she's Cool. She said, listen here, Laverne, the next time you want to call yourself crazy, switch it up. Say, I'm wonderful, or I'm phenomenal, or I'm the bomb diggity. Bomb diggity, I like that. <laughs> yeah, so Esmeralda and I were up on the roof, pouring out our cups of pee under the sidewalk with people walking by. Esmeralda saw this white man that likes to cat call her. He was on the sidewalk with no mask or gloves on. Now, Esmeralda had like six pee cups and she poured a bunch of them on to the white man on purpose. On purpose? He looked up at Esmeralda and yelled, you crazy bitch. Now, Esmeralda is a trip. She just kept pouring pee cups on him and yelled back, I ain't no bitch, I'm the bomb diggity. <laughs> I did not like that. Uh -uh. You did. Uh, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't wait to tell my cat. He looked at me and said, wow, never on, you're crazy. I told my cat, no, 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 Mr. Elba. I named my cat Mr. Elba. I said, no, no, Mr. Elba. I am the bomb diggity. You are the bomb diggity. Ooh, hold on. I got to pee. I bet you Esmeralda pees real cute. I bet you when Esmeralda pees, 
it is damn near magical. Bet you when Esmeralda pees, the angels and the fairies come out of hiding to snap pictures of Esmeralda peeing to post on their Instagram. Huh, I don't know. You think fairies use Instagram or Snapchat? I don't think they use Twitter. Maybe Facebook? Are, are you still peeing? Almost done. <sighs> Been thinking, you know, when this is over. I'm going to bow down to Mother Nature every chance I get. No more clubs for me. Mm -mm. I will take walks and hikes. I will listen to the whispers in the wind. Mm. Hard to hear whispers in the wind living in the city. I'll have to go to a real forest. <sighs> Only thing though. <sighs> Centaurs lurk in the forest. Forget the bears and the wolves, the centaurs worry me. Half man, half horse. Uh, I'm good with the horse half. I can trust the horse half. But the man half, hmm, the man half is a problem. What you looking at, Mr. Elba? Don't look at me like that, Mr. Elba. I had to pee. I am not crazy. Mr. Elba, I am not. I am the bomb diggity and I'm doing my best. Mr. Elba is so judgmental. Hey, all cats are judgmental. Because they plan in something. There is going to be an uprising. For all these centuries, they've watched us gobble up resources. We put our greed first, and the cats are sick of it. They're coming for us. I just have to convince Mr. Elba to spare me. But first, he'll have to forgive me. I've been rationing out his food because I'm not going outside to buy more cat food. Uh, plus, I can't spend money on cat food, not right now. No, Mr. Elba, I cannot. I gave you ramen noodles. Ramen's just gonna have to do for now. Laverne, you are so, so... Bum diggity! <laughs> yeah. And I'm getting through this. I'm gonna make it, baby cakes. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. And do you know why yeah. I'm gonna make it? Because I live in Queens and Andrew Cuomo has my back because I own every single episode of Luther and my tongue has grown so accustomed to the static electricity burns from licking the TV screen. <laughs> because tonight, tonight, Esmeralda's give me the Romanco lessons on the roof. <laughs> because I'm doing what I need to do. Mm -hmm. And because. Drum roll, please. <laughs> I am the bomb diggity. <laughs> <laughs>
because of what I spent on this flu shot. Because of the Affordable Care Act, that flu shot costs as much as all medical procedures should cost. It's free. It costs zero dollars. Let me tell you, I'm not bragging here, uh, when I was a little younger, I made a bit of a regrettable decision and I went to Planned Parenthood and got my finger pricked and, and did the test that you get when you make regrettable decisions and I turned out to be uh, negative and I've been thinking pretty much every single day as I've woken up on week uh, whatever we're on of this pandemic that I live in the largest city in the nation, this nation which has the highest gross domestic product of any other nation in the world, and that I'm living through the worst public health emergency in this nation in over a hundred years, and yet I can't go to PS84, to CVS, to Planned Parenthood. I can't go there and get a test and find out like, yeah, um, that guy who you were walking a little too close next to who coughed a few times on one of your walks you took recently, six feet apart with my mask on. Yeah, that guy did infect you and you tested positive or like you tested positive, like, thank God I'm asymptomatic or that, uh, that I tested negative. Like I just want to know, but it hasn't been made as easy as just going to PS84, going to CVS, going to a clinic like Planned Parenthood. And New York State is number one, the most tests of any state. And it's only 750,000 tests. And that makes me angry. And I don't really know what I can do about it, but I can tell you I'm making things like this. Yelling at my iPhone. That's what I can do about it. Ugh, I'm angry. This is my rage bear costume. When I get real angry, I, uh, I, I get in this costume and scream with rage. Ah! Actually, I just bought this bear suit like five years ago for a show and figure I have to keep using it somehow. Well, that was, uh, that was just David Lawson with New York is number one. And before that was a King Salawu and Namakula Mu and Gabriel Lawrence with Bomb Diggity. Uh, I'm going to put up their Venmo handles right now. Woo! It worked. That's great. Uh, and again, if you're feeling generous, please, please do give to the artists. Uh, now, there's one handle I haven't put up yet, and that would be the tank. The tank. Oh, man, it's so hot in here. It's really... Okay, I'm just going to put you under my shoulder there. I was gonna try and do the whole bit with, with the bear the whole time. Uh, but uh, there's one handle I haven't put up yet. Now I got bear fur all over me, and that is the tank. Uh, of course, all of our theatrical uh, institutions are struggling right now, uh, but the tank who, uh, who is just so generous in, in how they, uh, they give space to artists, uh, Truly lifting all economic barriers to making work right now. Uh, they, of course, uh, need our help uh, most of all. Uh, the Tank Gala is one way to show your support. It is coming up on May 19th, and you can go to tankgala2020.org in order to learn more. Artist tickets start at just $30, and really, we have to do everything we can to support this theater. Now, we have one more guest for you today at the Cyber Tank Variety Show. Uh, that is Vanessa Chia Chung uh, with, oh goodness, why, why didn't I write down the name of, oh, I wrote it down over here. So uh, the bear is just going to leave the box for a second. There we go. I got to just read it from, ah, I knew it. Ah, with a short called, Unexpected Latinas. This is Vanessa Chia Chung, and enjoy.
Pa arriba. Pa abajo. Pa centro. Pa adentro. Mom called again. Malcriada. Sin vergüenza. Te portas como una niña. I always thought you you had to earn the sin vergüenza. But no, you just become one. La negra. La china. Zero recognition. All of the changalas. <laughs> I uh I lost your monthly metro. You what? Some weirdo bumped into me and then I... Malcriada. Sin vergüenza. Te portas como una niña. No me hables así, cabrona. Fue un accidente. Accidente. I thought you borrowed that. I love you. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Hermana. That was Vanessa Chia Chung with Unexpected Latinas. Uh, so we have one more act for you today, and that's one of mine. Uh, but first, before we get there, I want to thank... <coughs> oh my goodness, there's bear fur everywhere. Ugh, I regret that choice. But that's, that's for a whole other episode all about regret. Uh, so first I'd like to uh, thank all of our extraordinarily angry, rage-filled artists. Uh, thank you all for, for creating uh, work for us right now. It's hard to make work right now. And so I, I do so deeply respect your bravery and your productivity and uh, and it's wonderful hearing everyone's rage and anger. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for tuning in. Uh, I well, I was hoping to be more interactive with the comments section, but you know, technical difficulties being what they are, I I'm glad we made it through this show whatsoever. Thanks again to the tank. Remember May 15th is the tank gala. And next week uh, will be in May. Wow, months and time. Uh, and next week, next Tuesday at four, technical uh, you know, abilities notwithstanding, uh, we're going to be, uh, the Variety Show will be back uh, with uh, an episode on uh, mental health. Uh, it'll be Mental Health Awareness Month. And there's so much, uh, there's so much of a conversation right now about uh, physical health. Uh, how can we also think about being mentally healthy at this time as well. Thanks again for tuning in. Here is uh, a piece that I created a couple weeks ago with choreographer Katie Rose McLaughlin and composer Alex Weston. We actually pre-recorded it last time and uh, built all the camera movements uh, in post. And this will be the first time that we're doing it live for you right now. And I'm very excited about that. So this is Corners 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 uh, by the Theater in Quarantine, which you can subscribe, subscribe to on YouTube at Joshua William Gelb. Thank you so much for tuning in.
Thanks again. Stay well. Stay safe. We'll get through this together, one way or another. Until then, I'll be here in the closet. I'm Joshua William Gelb, and this is the Cyber Tank Variety Show. We did it. Have a great night.